Hi everyone, welcome to your channel Impulse Tech. I am Yogesh, and today I come up with a very interesting IoT project. This IoT project is very helpful for the elderly people. As we know that sometimes elderly people suddenly fall. So due to this sudden fall, they might get injured, or their bones get injured, or you can say sometimes they start bleeding as well. Now. During that time, that particular person is not able to call us, or they are not able to reach us. If, so, in that in that particular case, we need to give them a immediate support, or you can say we need to help them on immediate basis. Now, if they are not able to call us, then how can we able to help them whenever we are not there? So, for that purpose, I have built the project called IoT Best Fall Detection. So, whenever the elderly person falls, then you will suddenly receive the notification on your mobile phone that the particular person is false. So for building this IoT project, I have used ESP32 board and the MPU6050 3-axis accelerometer and 3-axis gyroscope. So without wasting time, let's build this project. So this is the EasyDA platform. I have already logged into my account. Now we will create a new project. So I'll go to the file and I'll create a new project. And I'll give the name to the project. So in order to add the components, you have to click on library and then you just have to search your component. So you can search ESP32 or whatever the components you wanted to add, you can add it. Now, I have already like added all those components in my favorite section. So I'll just click on favorite. I'll click on all. And you can see that I have added all the components. So here I'll click on this ESP32 dev kit v1. And you can see this particular board is here now i'll just take this board to my project and i've added and now i have added this board okay now i haven't saved this particular component let's let me add this component once again mpu 6050 and go to the user contributed and look for the same component that you have okay this is the same component that we have with me so now we will do the connections this is very simple connection just take the wire and connect the VCC to the 3v3 pin. Connect the ground pin to the ground of the ESP32 board. So now these are the important pins that we need to connect, which is SCL and SDA. So we will connect the SCL pin of the MPU6050 to the ESP32 22 pin number. Now, as we know that we have left with the SDA, then we will connect the SDA to the pin number 21. So this is very simple circuit diagram that we need to follow. Connect the same onto the breadboard as well. This is what I've done on the breadboard as well. This is very simple. So if you are new to this Blink IoT platform and you haven't used this before, then I have already made a tutorial on how to use the Blink IoT platform. So I have mentioned the link inside the description box, also in the i button. So you can check out that video and then come back here. Now we will configure this Blink IoT platform according to our need. Now I have already created few templates here. If you can see home automation and IoT based heart rate monitoring system. Now we will configure our this template which is IoT based heart rate monitoring system. So now I will just change this template to the IoT based fault detection. I'll click on this and now I'll click on edit. Now I'll just change this project to IoT based fault detection. Here you can see the hardware that we're using is ESP32 and the connection type is basically Wi-Fi. Now go to the metadata. Now metadata is nothing but it's the data which is related to the device like device name, device owner, device location, what is the device time zone and what is the hotspot name that is uh, your device is connected to. So this is basically the data which is related to the device. Now we'll go to the next tab which is data stream. So this is one of the most important tab in the template. This is pulse sensor. Uh, if you have watched my previous video, I've created one uh, data stream for pulse sensor data reading. So I will delete this as of now. As you can see here, we are going to create the data stream right from the scratch. So I'll click on new data stream and then I'll select here virtual pin. I will explain you why I have selected the virtual pin and everything. Now, in order to configure this virtual pin, we need to give some data like we need to give name, we need to like select the virtual pin and the data type and the unit as well. So here, what name should I give? Now this project is basically detecting the fall using the MPU6050. Now how we are detecting the fall? So we are detecting the fall 
using 3-axis accelerometer and 3-axis gyroscope. So gyroscope can give us the angular velocity data. So I'll just show you the code. Don't worry, I'll explain you this code. So here we are reading the acceleration on x-axis, acceleration on y-axis and acceleration on the z-axis. Now, also here you can see we are reading the data of gyroscope on x-axis, gyroscope on y-axis and the gyroscope on z-axis. So I wanted to see all those data onto the Blink IT platform. So based on these names, I can configure the virtual pins. I hope you are understanding. So if you are not able to understand anything, please let me know inside the comment section. So now I'll go back to the platform. So here I'll give the name. So give the name like acceleration on X. Here I'm selecting the pin V0. Now you will come to know that why I'm selecting all those pins. I will explain you in while explaining you the coding. As of now, I don't know the value like maximum and the minimum value. So that's why I've written only zero and thousand. So I'll just click on, you can change the color as well. So here I'll select this uh, color and then I'll click on create. So now I will create the next data stream, which is for acceleration on Y axis. Let's click on new data stream, virtual pin, and just give the name acceleration on Y axis. And you can select the color, select the pin. As you can see, we have already used the V0. Here I'm selecting the V1. And let's write this as a thousand only as of now. And you can select the color as well. So here I'll select this color and I'll just click on Let's create the third data stream, which is for acceleration on Z axis. Give the name acceleration on Z. Virtual pin is already selected, which is V2. And unit, I'm not giving the unit as of now. And then click on create. Let's create one more data stream, which is for gyroscope on X. So I'll write here virtual pin, rename it as gyro on x and here i'll write as a thousand and i'll just select here the virtual pin color as orange and just click on create now also we need to create one more virtual pin for y let's click on virtual pin and write here gyro on y and write thousand and select the color the last data stream that we need to create is gyro on z I'll click on virtual pin and I'll write here gyro on Z and then write here as thousand and click on create. As you can see, we have successfully created all the data stream that we wanted to monitor in order to detect the fall. So we have created six data streams. So this event tab is basically for whenever your device is online or offline it will send you the notification on your mobile phone that your device is online or your device is offline. First, we will just create the web dashboard. So now I wanted to monitor all the data which is given by the MPU 6050. So on the left hand side, you can see the, all the widgets. So here I will add only this widget, which is gauge. First, I'll explain you how to configure this widget. Let's click on setting. Click the name. It's like give the name like acceleration on X and choose the data stream. You know that this is the data stream for acceleration on X. Select that. Now I'll just click on save. So we have created one widget. Let's configure the second widget. Click here, give the name acceleration on Y, choose the data stream P1 and click on save. So we have created the second. Let's duplicate this and create the third one acceleration on Z, delete this copy name and select the data which is acceleration on Z V2 and click on save. Now duplicate this once again and configure it and give the name gyro on X and select here gyro on X. I'll click on save. Okay. Now one more time duplicate this one and just configure this as well this should be gyro on y select the gyro on y here as well and then change the color and click on save duplicate this thing as well and then configure this as well just delete this and write here z and configure it like you uh, now select gyro on z change the color 
and click on save. Now, as you can see, we have successfully added widget for all the data that we wanted to read. We need to configure the mobile dashboard. Now, in order to configure the mobile dashboard, we need to go to the mobile app of the Blink IoT platform. So I'll click on save and apply here. And now we will learn how to configure the Blink IoT platform. So let's see how to configure the mobile dashboard as well. So here I have opened the Blink IoT app on my mobile, as you can see. Okay, as you can see on my screen, these are my previous templates. So as you can see, this is the Blink IoT app which I'm using. So there you can see like two templates which I've already created. One is home automation and one is like IoT based heart rate monitoring system. So this is the previous project which I've built. As you know that we have configured the same template just now on the desktop, which is IoT based heart rate monitoring. So I'll just click on this and now you can see there is a setting icon on the right. Just click on this setting icon and you can see on the top that IoT based fault detection. Now I'll just delete all the stuff which I have added previously. Now, so let's add the widgets where we can able to see or visualize the data. So let me add the widgets. So I'll add here gauge. So total we need six gauges. Three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we will configure individual widget. Okay. So here we need to choose the data stream for this particular widget. So let's click on choose data stream. As we know that we have created this data streams. I'll click on acceleration on X. And I'll enter the title as acceleration on X. I'll click on next. Also, you can see you can change the alignment of the name as well. So I'll clip. So I will keep it in the center and the font side also you can choose. Okay. Now we have done with the changes in one widget. Let's go back to the second. I'll just click on the second widget and I'll choose the data stream, which is acceleration on Y. I'll click on this. I'll click on design. I'll give the name acceleration on Y and I'll click on next. I'll click on center alignment. I'll increase its font size and I'll go to the yes, we have done with the changes. Let's go back. So we have modified the two. So we have configured the two widget. Let's configure the third one, which is acceleration on Z. Let's select the acceleration on Z. Click on design, enter the title. Acceleration on Z. Click on next, select center alignment, increase the font size and you can also change the color as well. Just select the color. Go back. Go back. So we have successfully configured the third one, which is acceleration on Z. Let's configure the fourth one. First, I need to configure the gyro on X. I'll click here and I'll just select gyro on X. Okay. Let me go back. Let me select design. I need to rename it. I guess I have given the wrong name. It's gyro on X. Click on next. Go back. It's done. So we have successfully configured the gyro on X. Let's configure the gyro on Y. Select gyro on Y. Go select on design. Click the name. Gyro on Y. Click on next. Select center alignment. Increase the font size. Select the color. Click on custom colors or else yes we can able to give the color yeah go back now the last widget that we need to configure gyro on z let's select the data stream gyro on z design give the name gyro on z click on next center alignment font size increase go back so as you can see we have successfully configured all the widgets that we have added. Now go back. So these are the widgets that we have added. Now, whenever our device is online, it will say online here and we will able to see all the data here as well on the Blink IoT app. We need to get the push notification on our mobile phone whenever there is a fault detected. 
now let's see how we can do that now we will learn about one of the most important part of this project that is how to write the code for iot based fault detection project so before we start understanding this code we need to install few libraries in order to read the data from mpu 6050 so what are those library so the first library that we need to include is basically the adafruit mpu 6050 so in order to add the library go to the sketch go to the include library click on manage libraries search for adafruit mpu 6050 so here you can see this is the library that this is the first library which is adafruit mpu 6050 by adafruit you need to install so i have already installed this library now let's look at the second library that you need to install which is adafruit unified sensor library so you need to install the adafruit unified sensor library the second library that you need to install is basically adafruit unified sensor library so here is the library which i have already installed so this library you can find at the bottom the third library that you need to install is adafruit bus io just search for adafruit bus io so as you can see here i have already installed this library as well so whenever we start making the project using the mpu 6050 we need to have three libraries so let me just explain you how to add the device to the template so here on the left you can see there is a search icon so click on this search icon then on the right hand side you can see there is option called add a new device so if you click on this icon then you can easily able to add the device as of now i am using the free version that's why i am only able to add two devices now whenever you click on this plus which is like add a new device then you will get options called select the device and add a device to the existing template right so we have created the template and then select your template and add the device device to the template that you have created maybe it sounds complex to you but please let me know inside the comment section if you have not understood this now here i'll just rename all the stuff because the name of this project is basically iot based fault detection now click on save now as i mentioned how we can get all those stuff blink template id blink device name blink authorization token we will get this from our device so just come here select your device and go to the info and copy this thing and come back to the code and paste entire thing here control v as you can see we have successfully copied the data now the next part is important that how i have got this code or how i have created this code you can also easily able to understand or easily able to get the code just go to the file go to the examples and go to the mpu 6050 and click on motion detection here i have already opened this tab now this is the code for detecting the motion whenever the mo whenever the mpu 6050 sensor moves now this is the code which i have modified and this is the code which is in the example section now here you can see i have included all those libraries for the mpu 6050 so i have added all those library here as well okay now i will modify this because here i need to provide the wifi credentials so i will add my wifi credentials here the next part is basically the blink timer which i am using from the blink library itself now this is the function i have created so before this i will explain you about the white setup i will explain you this function later just see the white setup of this code the example code and see the white setup of this as well so this entire is same if you see this thing this is completely copied right so i have copied this code from this example code for the white setup and i pasted it here and as i am building this iot project then we need to add these things as well which is blink dot begin so this blink dot begin is basically for connecting our device to the wifi now we are also starting the timer okay now inside the white loop for iot thing for iot code there is nothing inside the white loop but now i will tell you what i have done inside the function called white sense sensor so this white sense sensor is nothing but if you see inside the white loop i have just copied all those code from white sense sensor and pasted it here but the change i have done is this one as i have mentioned you that 
I have used here virtual pin in order to send the data. So here you can see I have I am writing the data which is called a dot acceleration on x. Now what is this a dot acceleration on x? So here you can see this is basically inside the library of the MPU 6050. So in order to read the acceleration on x, we can use this command called a dot acceleration dot x. And now I am writing this data to the virtual pin v0 which we have created inside the blink platform the same way i am writing the acceleration on y to the virtual pin v1 same way for acceleration on z to the virtual pin v2 now the same way i have done it for the gyro data as well like you can see i am writing the gyro on x to the virtual pin v3 i am writing the gyro on y to the virtual pin v4 i am writing the gyro on z to the virtual pin v5 so this is the simple modification that you need to do in this example code i haven't uploaded this code so i want to upload this code with you and i wanted to test this project as well i have already compiled this code there is no error in the code now i'll just click on the upload so i just wanted to give you one tip here that whenever it says connecting then you need to press the boot button on the esp32 board then only your code will upload it otherwise your code will not upload so as you can see my code is successfully uploaded now we will see that whether we are able to get the data onto the blink iot platform or not or whether our device is online or not let me open the blink iot platform so as you can see our device is online now let's go to the device and let's see whether we are able to get the data here or not okay so here I can only able to see the data of acceleration on X. Now what I'll do, I'll just try to shake the device or I'll just try to fall the device and we will get the data onto the respective axis. So on the screen, you can see this is my setup. Now what I'll do, I'll just try to lift the device and you can see the acceleration on X is increasing and I'll just drop the device and now you can see the acceleration on X is 9 and I'll just try to do it once again it's 9 on the x as we have seen on the screen that whenever i'm trying to lift the device then the acceleration on x is increasing so now we will create the automation that whenever the device falls then we will receive the notification on our mobile phone so let me go back to the template click on this iot based fault detection and go to the automation and now just click on the automation for this only click on sensor and condition and action okay now i'm just right now i'm just focusing on acceleration on x only so right now i'm just creating the automation on acceleration on x only so let me just create on save and apply and go back here you can see on the left hand side there is a tab called automation and now here I have already created few automations. I will delete all those autom automations. I will just click on device state. And I will choose the device which is IoT based fault detection. Now as I mentioned that I am only using the acceleration on X. So that's why here you can see only acceleration on X. Now if you wanted to add other axis then you can do that. Go to the template and you can choose which data stream you wanted to automate. Now is any so here i'll just select is greater than value like i'll select here five and then what you wanted to do if the acceleration on x is greater than five that means there is a fall that's what i'm trying to do right now and then what you can do you can send the push notification which is send in-app notification or else you can send the mail as well so i'll write here fall detected I'll copy this and paste it here inside the message as well. And now, if you wanted to create another action for this, you can create that as well. You can control a device. You can forward the device data. You can send an email as well. Okay. Now I'll just click on save. Okay. Now here you can see that it's not a triggered. That means the device data is, that means the acceleration on X is not crossed the five mark. Okay, so we'll go to the device 
and here I'll come and I'll select and here you can see the acceleration on X is basically one. Now what I'll do, I'll just try to increase the acceleration on X while lifting the device. So now what I will do, I will just try to increase the acceleration on X more than five. And then we will see whether we're able to detect the notification on the mobile phone or not. So now you can see on the screen, uh, my mobile dashboard. Now I'll just try to lift the device. And then you will just see whenever I lift the device, whenever the device will fall, then acceleration on X axis will greater than five. And then I will receive the notification on the mobile phone. Let's see that. It's four. Now let me fall the device. It's seven. Now you can see I've received the notification on my mobile phone as well, which is fall detected. So if you found this project useful for you, then do subscribe the channel and like the video, press the bell icon so that you will never miss my new video. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video.